Hello everyone, in this video we're going to bust a couple myths with e-bikes. So here's a S5 third generation Levo, currently with the 29er wheel but I'll cover that later. We got an S5 Kinevo over there, my personal bike. The backstory basically picked up this S5 third gen Levo for my dad to ride while he was visiting and I discovered some shocking results while testing both. Within following my dad for a couple of miles, I decided it was definitely time for him to try the Kinevo because he looked pretty sketch fest on the Levo. Now logic would tell you that a 74 year old man would take the Levo because he likes to cruise on fire rows and just have a good time. With no adjustment period needed, he came right to the Kinevo and this is what he said. Can you tell the difference? Yeah. Better? I think yours is better. Wow. I was honestly kind of shocked that he preferred the Kinevo because I was like, huh? Okay, that's the first myth busted. You don't need to shred to enjoy a long travel bike. Now the common denominator throughout this video comparing the two bikes and busting the myths is my mediocre riding skills. And if you've never rode a long travel bike, please leave a comment because I'd love to troll you. I think the most common myth I hear about long travel, long wheelbase bikes is they don't corner, they don't fit in the corners. So this is the Levo and I'm in a tight unsupported corner and it felt pretty good, nothing too much to complain about. Now coming in hot on my Kinevo, I felt much more supported and lower to the ground allowing me to go faster in the tight corner. Now I tried this test over and over and over. So here's the Levo in a unsupported super tight corner and I just can't lay the bike over. Every time I jump on the Kinevo, I just feel planted to the ground, much more confident and faster in the corners, even with its monstrosity of a wheelbase. Last test will be some built up bike park berms. Now the Levo is an awesome bike in its own right. Don't get me wrong here. But once you jump on that long travel, low slung Kinevo, you're just like, wow. Let me get my lab coat out and let's do some scientific research in slow motion. Definitely looking lower on the bottom there on the specialized Kinevo. To better explain my point in real life, let's look at the handlebars on the specialized Kinevo. One inch lower than the Levo. So basically that myth is busted. The lower the bike, the better it's gonna corner. Don't look at the wheelbase. Next on the adventure list, let's go for an all day epic. Conventional theory would tell you to take the Levo, right? Yes, this bike is absolutely amazing. It's like the iPhone, it's kind of boring, but it's really great. Now let's check out the Kinevo on this fast section of cross country trail. Of course that monstrosity of a wheelbase feels better at high speed, but what's the penalty you say? Well, e-bikes and the Kinevo, they just kill all your conventional theories. This bike has a very comfortable seat tube angle and it's not much of a penalty for riding all day. Yeah, but long travel, it just kills your battery, right? Well, I'm gonna do a test here. I'm gonna take my specialized Kinevo battery, swap out the skid plates and see if that's actually true. And it may be true because the first day the Levo did get more range than the Kinevo. Now, keep in mind, this is a very unscientific test. With the older specialized Kinevo battery with like 90 charge cycles in the Levo, it got two miles less before the red battery light turned on. The newer battery in the Kinevo did result in like three extra miles before the red battery light turned on. Definitely a penalty for that long travel, but an older battery is actually worse. Let's get back to the stem of that low center of gravity on the specialized Kinevo. Okay, the Kinevo is the most confidence inspiring bike on steep terrain I have ever rode. And yes, this little stem thing is trending. Have I tried it? No. Have you ever rode a 630 stack height bike and then rode a 644 next? Probably not. Don't mind the boomer camera work here. You know, when you're 75, electronics get pretty difficult. So this is the specialized Levo and I just feel kind of tall up on the bike. Not as confident, but definitely an amazing bike. Okay guys, here's the moral of the story. Downhill Kinevo is a substantially safer bike for all riders to feel more confident if you do anything more than riding bike paths. So I'm basically stuck with this boring Levo for the remainder of the trip because I do not want my 74 year old dad to crash. So it's time to start janking this specialized Levo around and making it more to my liking. First thing we gotta do is slam the stack all the way down because this S5 has a ridiculous 644 stack height. 
I promise you, if you ride a 630 stack height, you will never go back. This is kind of a band-aid to slam the handlebars all the way down to lower the stack down to a reasonable rate. This will also help you pick the front end of the bike up if it feels too big. There's a big investment here to lower the handlebars down. You gotta release four bolts and move two washers on top of the stem. Next up, my favorite category, wheels and suspension travel. Continuing on with my Tinkerfest, it was time to 29 the Levo. I found if you remove this mudguard, the 29er goes right inside the bike. I know all you good little schoolboys are gonna say you're not allowed to do that. Put a piece of duct tape over where the mud guard was and call it good. Just try it out. I promise you, you will enjoy it. Changing the wheels on your bike, dangerous, yes. Void your warranty, yes. Does it look better, yes. Does it ride better, hell yeah. Okay, back to busting myths. This is the full 29er Levo and it's just mocking through this staircase without a problem because of that larger wheel with only 150 millimeters of travel. We're on the mullet edition Canevo and it is going deep into the ruts and it has 30 millimeters more travel on the rear and it's not as good. Travel is completely irrelevant guys. You need to look at wheels and geometry. Okay, next ride or all rides from now on will be full 29er Levo because it's extremely capable. As per usual, the Canevo's just killing it, but 29er Levo here, feels like an equal player with its 150, 160 full 29er wheels. Let me tell you the secret sauce you need to know. The full 29er Levo will save your ass in the rock gardens as long as you have enough legs and technique to ride a full 29. There's still major shortcomings on this bike and you can't purchase things to fix it. On the bigger hits, the rear shock comes up short. The Levo's 210 by 55 rear shock needs to be packed completely full with spacers and it definitely comes up short for more aggressive riding and or heavy riders like myself. Now the Kinevo comes stock with a 230 by 62.5 shock, which is a much better shock for the big hits, even though this bike is coming up short in the rock gardens with that tiny little wheel. I don't know if this is a myth, but I'll just tell you that 230 by 60 shocks are substantially better. And I don't think anyone's gonna argue me that the Cascade Link for the Levo doesn't make it better. So as the myth goes, short travel bikes like the Levo jump better. And yes, the Levo does jump better, but it's not what you think. Having recently rode this absolutely amazing machine here, the Kinevo SL, with 170 millimeters of rear travel, the Kinevo SL jumps better and has more travel. So it's all about the rear suspension tune for how it's gonna feel on the jumps. If you're not an absolute tinkerfest and don't wanna void your warranty, click the video on the screen because this bike needs no modifications.